Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Um, it's Christina from Streamline Canine, and today we are talking about the best way to live with your dog in the home, the most harmonious way to live with your dog and the most training conducive way. So right now I've got my dog on place. This is Zula. I'm sure you guys have seen her before, even though she's looking like a grump right now. Um, the problem with most dog owners and most people is that inside the house, it is a complete free for all. Right, the dog, if the mailman comes to the door, the dog's running to the door, people can't come into the home without being jumped on, the dog is always getting into something, people can't get done what they need to get done unless they either lock the dog up or they, I don't know, they put the dog outside. So this is a way to enforce more or to create more control and structure in your dog's life. And that is so important because if you don't have that on the micro level, you're not going to have that once you enter um, the outside world with more distractions, right? So if we can't control our dogs in the house um, and they get to do whatever they want at every impulse, at every whim, they are learning to do that and they're not learning that they have to listen. So you can't expect dogs to not to, if they cannot listen in the home, they will not listen to you outside the house. Place is a really great command when you are busy doing something just like I am right now. I'm busy talking to you guys and filming a video, but I don't necessarily need to put her in her kennel because I am home, I'm in and out, you know, I'm around. But I don't need her running around and getting into things because she's a very playful dog. So she would be, you know, seeing whatever she could play with, right? Just like most higher energy, high drive dogs are. So for me, this is a way to have her with me, but she's in a controlled space where I know that she's not gonna be getting into anything. So place means that she needs to go and lay down on an elevated surface or just a defined surface like a rug or some kind of mat where they can see. Once I'm ready for her to be, to get up and I'm ready to interact with her again, I say free, right? So once I tell her free, once I tell her free, she can be running around and doing stuff if I want to play with her or pet her. If I want to pet her, you know, this is the time when I do my stuff with her for as long as I want. And then when I'm ready, maybe I'm going to leave the room and I don't need her to come with me. I'll say, Zula, place. And she goes to the bed. Uh 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 uh. Place. And she lays down, right? Um, and one thing is that if your dog knows what place means and they want to, like she just did, she wants to get off the place, right? Even though I didn't release her, you have to hold firm on your boundaries so that your dog understands that you mean what you say. And then she goes and she completes the command. So if I had a treat, I could also reward her. Um, but at this point, she's been doing this so long that she understands the criteria. So she's on place. Now I can do stuff, right? I can walk around. If I need to do computer work, I could sit down at my desk and do computer work. Um, I'm going to even walk out of the room. All right, and then now I'm going to head out to the living room because I want to go make myself coffee. And she can come with me because I have multiple place beds in my house if I need. So I'm just going to tell her free. So again, she is released now. I don't really care what she does or she can, she can run around, she can sniff. A lot of people, when I tell them about the place command, they think that it only means ah, 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 off. When I tell them about the place command, they think it just means your dog never gets to play or they, you never get to interact with your dog. Whoa, Zula. Um, but that's not true. It just means that when on command, I should be able to have my dog go to a set space and control herself, right? Because I have a really high drive dog 
and I wouldn't be living very harmoniously if she got to act on every single whim that she had. When I need to bring groceries in the house, I can put her on place. When I need to answer the door, I can put her on place. If I want to sit on the couch and just not be bothered by her because she's very nosy, then I put her on place. It's fine. So I'll do it again. There's a place bed over there in that corner. Do the place. Good girl. Good girl. And now I'm going to go open the front door. dogs would be so triggered by that knocking on the door and me just opening the door they would fly off their beds or they would fly to the door and you wouldn't be able to just have the peace of opening your door and letting someone into your house or, or grabbing this package right um, having that control is so important for your dog because if you don't have that again on this level inside their own house you're not going to have very much success when you leave the house and you expect them to behave on a leash at a park or expect them to recall away from distracting things, right? It all starts in the home. So she's free. So I can do whatever I want. If I want to play, if I want to train. Now, if you have a high drive dog, I don't necessarily recommend you play with them in your house. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to do it. Good girl. Ready? Ready? Yes! Good dog! Good girl! Good dog! Ready? Sit! Down! Scooing! Yes! Good dog! Good dog! Girl. So you see, we can have fun. We can be crazy. You can do stuff. Oh. But when I'm ready to send her to place, Zula, Zula, place. Free. Then I can do that, right? I need to have control, especially if you have breeds that are high energy breeds, right? They can very easily have no off switch if we don't teach them one or if they don't naturally have one they're um they need to have you need to have a way to control them because you have a predator living in your house and they basically they don't have the luxury of acting on every whim and desire that they have or else we're going to end up with you know people are going to get hurt walking into your house if your dog's really strong and they jump on them you know you've got small animals and small children you just can't have your dog doing whatever the heck they want whenever they want yeah. Yeah. Oy. Ready? Down. Six. T. Good. Yes. Good dog. Oy. All right. Oy. Good girl. Down. Yes. Good dog. For the kind of tools that I use to help reinforce the place command. If you already have a dog in training with me, they are already gonna know what place means. They're going to understand the criteria. When they come back to your house, if they have associations with how they used to behave, they're going to try to test to see what they can get away with. So this information is gonna be helpful for you guys as well. Um, so when I have a dog that's learning place initially, like they don't know what place even means. My expectations for the dog is that they don't stay there very long at all, right? I'm just luring them onto place and then I'm rewarding them for being on place and, I'm, and I'll tell them break and I'll let them off, right? So I do a lot of repetitions. I, I start naming it place. They start running onto the bed and getting a treat and I release them. Over time, I start to build up the duration. So I go from them staying on the bed for maybe a second or two 
to maybe five to 10 seconds, to 30 seconds, to a minute, to two minutes, so on, right? Just lots and lots of reps. Now, once they get to the point that they understand place and they are choosing to leave without you releasing them, right? I'm going to introduce a consequence to that behavior. So I provide a negative consequence for breaking a command and a positive consequence for listening and for staying on the bed. So the positive consequences are things like they can get bully sticks on their bed, they can get treats, they can get pets on the bed, right? Um, but my negative things are if your dog has already been trained by me, your dog will understand the e-collar. So an e-collar correction for breaking the place command is gonna be the go-to to all my clients, right? The other thing you can do is you can use a slip lead or you can use a prong collar. If you've got a dog that really tries to leave and maybe they try to run away, I always recommend using a leash option, right? Because some dogs are sneaky enough where they're going to get off place and then they might run upstairs or they might go hide in a different room and try to play chase with you. So any dogs that want to do that, they need to be on a leash. Or if you have the dog in a very highly distracting scenario and the dog keeps breaking the command and needs the consistency of the leash, then you put it on. Examples like if your dog is used to rushing the door when someone knocks, you're probably gonna want to have a leash on your dog, right? And you can have a second person answer the door and you can be here to reinforce your place command with your dog. So my dog's not going to break the command, but if she was, when she was little and kind of in that in-between stage where she was starting, she knew what place meant, but she was like, mm, I'm done staying here, I'm gonna get up. I would leave a leash on her, right? So if she tried to run away, I could just step on her leash. I would bring her back and remind her of her command again. And when she listened, I could give her a treat, give her a rub, right? Free. So for example, if she jumped off right now, see that place. And I can use the help of the leash to guide her. Good girl, right? And um, if you have a dog, the prong collar is better for a dog that maybe is a stronger dog that is belligerently at breaking the place, right? Like if you've got a really strong shepherd or XL bully, Connie Corso, some of those really, really strong breeds, I would prefer to give them a prong collar correction and bring them back to their bed, right? Some of your smaller dogs, your, your less hard dogs, they don't need that, um, but certainly there are dogs that do. And at a certain point, in your training, especially to my clients, because your dogs will, they, they will know better. If your dog chooses to break their commands and we are just nagging them every time to go back to place, we should at a certain point, we should give them more of a knockout punch correction so that it really is a consequence. And they're like, I don't wanna break place again. Because we can get to the point where dogs are okay with um, maybe the level 10 e-collar correction. It's not really a correction if it's just a bit of a, eh, that was okay, I'll, I guess I'll go back to bed. But it was still worth it for them to get up and maybe steal food off of a table or get up and sneak something, right? We need to make corrections valuable if we're noticing that dogs are okay with it and are still choosing to break commands, right? We don't want to be nagging the dogs six months after they've gone home from training if you're still seeing that the dog always breaks the place command in a certain scenario. So keep that in your mind. Don't be afraid to give them a knockout punch to my clients, right? Because I know I'm confident in your dogs that they understand the, the criteria. And the last thing that we can do is your dog um, being on place is a great time for your dog to get things like bully sticks or those yak chews or marrow bones, high value treats that your dog um, stays busy with, it's a really great reinforcer for the place command because re great, really great reinforcer if your dog is getting them on place. They start to run to place because they're excited because they know that's where they get rewards. <laughs> Do that, place. <laughs> Girl. All right, 
So she's got her bully stick, she's on place. This is also important when you have multiple dogs living in a house so they don't fight over the same bones. If they are all on place or on their, in their designated areas to have their bones and their high value treats, then you're not gonna have dogs fighting with each other because I don't expect dogs to just give up items to other dogs at whim. It's just not how that really works. In the, in the animal kingdom, they're gonna wanna fight to keep what is theirs. Place can also be anything. Place can be anything with a defined border. So if I tell her to place on this, she'll do it. Free place. Good girl. So if you are camping or you're traveling, maybe you're at a hotel and you want to utilize your place command but you don't have an elevated dog bed with you, you can have a little mat or a doggy bed or there, Coleman makes foldable elevated dog beds but you don't have to use this elevated bed forever or in all scenarios once your dog understands the command. Now it is good to have these at home and especially when you're initially teaching the dog because the elevated, the, because it's elevated, it is very obvious when your dog steps off of the place bed, right? It's a very clear boundary. When you have a flat dog bed, your dog can lay half on and half off the bed and you're not really sure where the boundary is and they're not really sure where it is. So I find it much easier to teach them on an elevated dog bed. Plus, they're easy to clean and they're cool because the air can go out the bottom, the hot air from their bodies. So yes, place could be that. Place could be this rug. Place could be whatever has a defined surface. Now, once your dog knows what place means, right? And they've, they understand the consequences. They understand that there's corrections for getting off place. They understand that there's rewards for being on place. You can work up to having your dog on place for quite a long time. And in fact, I have my dog on place for probably hours at a time when needed. So don't feel bad about, no, don't think that your dog can only ever be on place for a max of 20 minutes per se. Um, when, a, when your dog is ready and understands the criteria, your dog can stay on place for quite a long time. Especially when you're around to keep reinforcing your rules with them. So your dog will get away with what you allow them to get away with, essentially. So you need to not be a backseat, a backseat rider to their show. You need to be an active part in maintaining the behavior that you have taught the dog and that you expect from the dog. And to my clients that are picking up dogs that have already been trained, your dog can stay on place for probably two hours, two, three hours without an issue. Does it mean that they won't ever test boundaries? Of course they will, right? They're dogs and they also know, they will also respect certain people that they know they have to more than others. So that is up to you to make sure that you're the leader and that you hold strong boundaries for the dog. Um, so yes, your dog can stay on place once they're capable and they understand, they can stay on place for hours at a time, okay? Place is good when people are around, they're home, they're present, they're in and out of the area, able to keep eyes on the dog now and then to make sure they didn't get off place when they didn't say, right? When you are not home, place is not a good command because you're not there to enforce it, they can get off, it starts to muddle the consistency of the command. And I don't like keeping dogs loose in the home without supervision, unless you've got a dog that's like super old, right? If your dogs come to training for me, if your dogs come to training with me, um, and especially if they have issues with reactivity, they must go in a kennel when you're not home or some kind of dog run where they aren't able to bark at the window all day, tear things up, have accidents in the house, all that kind of stuff. They shouldn't have the option to do that. And the crate is a really great way to ensure that. So I'm going to tell her to kennel up free because we're going to leave the house. So this is where your dog goes when nobody is home, okay? All my clients, if your dog is not kenneled and your dog is doing things when you are not home and you are coming to me with it about, about it being a problem, there's nothing I can tell you to do if no one's there to do anything. That's just how that works. So dog goes in a crate when nobody's home. Great.
And before the dog goes out the door, the dog should sit at the door and wait until you release them. This gets harder when you have multiple dogs, but if you have multiple dogs, that's what you signed up for. So you have to take the time to make sure that at least your trained dog sits and waits when you open the door, because if they cannot do this behavior, you risk them running out the door. Um, they're gonna knock people over. Overall, they cannot control their impulses if they can't do this. So she waits and she's gonna look at me, free, and then I release her. But she doesn't magically just do that. I have to hold a boundary. I have to make sure that if she prematurely tries to leave, I will get her and bring her back and do it again. So you have to be a strong leader, you have to hold the boundary, and then the dog will respect the boundaries that you are setting consistently. So that's something else you should do with your dogs too. And if your dog has been trained with me, again, they are capable, they will try at times to be naughty. That's just what they do. So anyways, that is it for my video. I hope you guys enjoyed, I hope you learned something. Please comment if there's anything else you'd like to see from me. Yeah. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.